I am not a, an engineer. I'm not a physicist. I'm not a chemist. I am a college dropout who's now an HVAC contractor. And I'm going to try to explain how an AC actually generates cold air, but very, very simply. Okay. So if I say anything wrong right now, please call me out in the comments. The reason I want to make this video is because I feel like this is a very misunderstood thing by HVAC guys. I, I think a lot of most HVAC guys, service techs, installers, they actually have no clue how, how the cold is produced. And so let's talk about it. This is ice. Now you're going to be, you're going to be like, Hey, you're crazy. Like we're talking about ACs. Why, why are you holding ice cube? So this ice is, is a, in a solid form right now. Okay. As the ice heats up, it turns into a liquid. Put this on the stove and heat it up. As this, as this ice right here, as the ice heats up, we are going to be able to watch it. I mean, it's pretty quick. Look at this. It's already melting. Why is it melting? We are moving heat in. This is something people just understand. We've melted now. We're almost all the way melted. And now as we come up further in temperature, it will start to evaporate. And the reason it's evaporating, it's not just disappearing. The ice is turning into a gas. Okay. So what is actually happening is we are putting heat into our water. The molecule of the water is not changing. It is still H2O, but the heat is going into it and causing the phase of the, it's causing a phase change is what it's called in thermodynamics. So the, the molecule started off in a solid form and we just pulled it out of our freezer. Once it's out of the freezer, it will immediately start warming up. And look, now, now we're getting so warm that we are actually boiling and it will start turning into a vapor. Our water will slowly start to evaporate until it's gone. So yeah, this is this, this, your air conditioner uses these same processes to create, to make your air cold. Not, but not with water. Okay. It uses refrigerant. If we let this boil for long enough, it will just completely go away. We're not going to do that because I don't have the time, but it will eventually just be gone. Anybody who's left a pot on the stove can attest to that. There is steam coming out of there now. So our water is now changing from a liquid into a gas. A lot of people out there who are going to be able to explain phase changes a lot better than me. But basically how it works is if you've got solid down here, liquid here, you've got gas here. And to get from a solid to a liquid, you got to go way up in energy and then same, same applies to liquid to gas. So, um, these molecules exist with a lot more energy than these ones do. So if you infuse, I mean, so when we're dealing with refrigerant, we're not dealing with solids. We're only dealing with liquid and gas. Okay. But if you take a fluid, and infuse a lot of energy, which is heat is energy. Okay. So if we infuse a lot of energy into a liquid, it will turn into a gas and then vice versa. If we take a lot of heat out of a gas, it will turn into a liquid. Okay. So you following now, now that we understand that gas exists at a higher energy than liquid does, we have another chart we're going to look at real quick. Okay. So th if this is, this is just, this is another very basic one. Okay. Yeah. This is P pressure. I'll write it out. And then this is T temperature. Okay. 
all you have to understand about this is that they have a positive correlation. So if you raise the pressure, you are also raising the temperature and vice versa. Okay. So if you lower temperature, you're going to have lower pressure. If you lower pressure, you're going to have lower temperature. It's got a positive correlation. That means that if one goes up, the other goes up. All right. So these are the things you got to understand to understand how an AC system actually creates cold air. You don't have to have a perfect understanding of it, but, but that, that, that's pretty much what you got to do. And then once you, once you have a grasp on this, all of a sudden everything will start to kind of make sense. So if you can, if you, if you don't understand this, um, the rest of the video probably isn't going to make a lot of sense, but, but, uh, in order to get from a liquid to a gas, you add heat in order to get from a gas to a liquid, you take away heat or what, or you just get cold. How does an AC actually make it cold though? We've got this old system right here that we just ripped out. Okay. We're going to take a look at this guy and figure this out. So we talked about how pressure and temperature have a positive correlation. So inside of here, I don't know how well this is going to focus, but all right. Yeah, right there, right there. We have our compressor. Okay. What does a compressor do? A compressor compresses. Okay. So I mean, it, it sounds stupid, but that's what it does. So it, com we, it takes refrigerant that's in its gas state and it compresses it from a low pressure gas into a higher pressure gas. When it does that, the refrigerant goes into the compressor, cool, and comes out hot. And then it, everything around it gets hot. The piping gets hot. Now, this fan turns on and your compressor enters this coil hot and it actually pulls heat off of the coil, which in turn is actively cooling the refrigerant. Okay. So that's how you, that's, I mean, it's kind of a lot to wrap your head around if you, if you don't have a good grasp on it, but that's what it does. So you are actually cooling the refrigerant out here. So the ambient air blows across, gets pulled across this coil. And then the refrigerant inside of this pipe, inside of this piping, the refrigerant is being cooled as, as the refrigerant is being cooled in this coil, it actually, it condenses, hence condenser coil. So, I mean, go figure, right? Everything has a name for a reason. Yeah, the compressor compresses, the condensing coil condenses, and the and the refrigerant will turn into a liquid from a gas to a liquid inside of this coil because it is being cooled. It's a, it, 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 yeah, so essentially kind of, I mean, it's losing heat, okay? So because the refrigerant loses heat, it condenses. Now, the refrigerant will get pumped. I mean, at, the, at this point, so it's been pumped, it's going through this coil and then it comes out of the coil there. And this pipe will be piped all the way over to here. It gets piped to right here. And so now keep in mind, we have moved from a from a gas to a liquid in the condenser coil. And then we go into the evaporator coil. But before the evaporator coil, we have this TXV right here, okay? This TXV is just a metering device. A me what a metering device does is it restricts the flow of refrigerant on purpose so that all the refrigerant going through it drops in pressure. When the refrigerant drops in pressure because our pressure and temperature have a positive correlation, the lower pressure means lower temperature. So right on the opposite side of this metering device, I mean, right here, it's going to be hotter and then right here. It's going to drop in pressure pretty drastically. So you'll see a lot of TXVs sweating right here because they get so cold so quick. So what happens then is it, the refrigerant flows into here, gets distributed throughout this evaporator coil and then just as the, I mean, inside the evaporator, you could say boiling, you could say evaporates, but the, 
the since it got so cold now the air from the house blows through the evaporator coil and it heats up the refrigerant we are adding heat to the refrigerant by blowing across this evaporator coil when you add that heat to the refrigerant you, it boils it evaporates but it it turns back from a liquid to a gas and then flows all the way back via and then it comes out of here on this this line which is your vapor line and gets piped all the way back all the way to there so yeah that is that's i mean then the whole cycle repeats over and over and over again so it's not just creating cold from absolutely nothing it it has to have you could say a somewhat even exchange happening otherwise the entire system would just run hot or run cold so as the outdoor unit runs it's pulling the heat out of essentially how you got to fi figure it is the outdoor unit you're, you're putting heat back into the world and bringing cold into your house so yeah that is a. Uh, I mean I know it was kind of a mouthful this is probably going to be a 20 minute video or something but um that's how a college dropout explains how an ac works and it can get more simple than that in a sense i mean uh but this is how once you kind of understand that hey we have to have this equal exchange whether you're an hvac tech whether you're a homeowner you can kind of try and figure out where your system isn't functioning properly by saying hey why isn't this happening so yeah um I'm uh, open to being told I'm wrong about really anything. So if I didn't explain something well, feel free to tear me apart in the comment section. If you guys uh, like this type of video, drop a like, uh, subscribe to our channel. I like, I mean, I, I'm very much a, I try and, you know, I like diving into how things work. So if, pe if people like this kind of stuff, then uh, some engagement is good because then I know that people like it. I'm, I don't think I really missed very much. I mean, um, if I did, feel free to hit on it in the comments. If I didn't, uh, then, then yeah, tell me I did the best job ever explaining it because uh, I'd like to know what people think. But, um, and really, there's probably one or two points that I didn't really explain right, which is fine. So, I, uh, yeah, cool, sweet. Well, uh, see you in the next one.